has room. And your arms. Then, alpha and omega factorial, when you study, well, this was the operator applied n minus 2 times 2 becomes a function 1 in the pattern of 1. And by the sum, I go on to k. I first have the constant here. di in the pattern of 1, 1 in the product with psi. How do you get di psi i here? Time to put the important part is the eigen value. Lambda i to the power of n minus 2 plus an error term. How does that? Which means, in this case now, I can get out an asymptotic expansion from my problem. And if I just take the first, if I just take the largest eigenvalue, I get that what asymptotics are. It's going to be a constant times the eigenvalue to high power. But I can get even better, throwing in more and more eigenvalues, I get better approximation for the whole thing. So if you do that calculation for these things, what do we get? We get alpha and remain factorial equal, but let's, let's just note something about eigenvalues. The largest one corresponds to k equal to zero. So on the real axis, they go like this, and then you get closer to the okay? The largest eigenvalue is positive and real there. Zero. So we just take the eigenvalues root k, that's equal to capital K. So I take it actually the 2k plus 1 first eigenvalues. We do the calculation exponential of 1 over 2 times eigenvalue and eigenvalue comes out n plus 1 plus order of the next eigenvalue coming in. So the card is k minus 1 and here. So this is what I can tell you about number of 1, 2, 3, well, no permutation, no double ascents. However, for me personally, it was really disappointing. Because look what happens with this constant. The eigenvalues that approach zero, both in the positive direction and the negative direction, and from the no, from the negative direction. This at one over here approaches negative infinity, so that says that the constant in front of here goes to zero. That's nice. However, from the positive direction, the constant gets larger and larger, it grows exponentially. So unfortunately, there's no way I can let this. Is that for me? Yes, sorry. No. <laughs> no one ever calls me. <laughs> so there's no way I can let this capital K go to infinity and get an exact expression for these numbers. And that's why this was disappointing for me. In fact, if you can use the same technique to start the alternating permutations, permutation was up, down, up, down, up, down. And 
Fing in that case turns out to be much nicer, and you, you can do Fourier series analysis, and everything is nice, and you can actually get an expression here that actually converges to the number of alternating permutation, the only number. But here, it doesn't work out that nice. However, this idea here gives me a great setup for what to do in um, a more general case. So this has been a special case of one to three avoiding permutations. So well, my it still proves the one in one conjecture or not yet? Oh yeah, it does prove the one in one conjecture. So why, why is it disappointing? Well, it, that, that's just putting this, taking oh. the first eigenvalue. But it only gives the first. Yeah. But I, give you yeah. <coughs> I really want to have it, something that converges to this number. But I oh, can't yeah, get you want to fool us in things. Yeah. yeah, and I don't get that. This is the leading one. Yeah. yeah. So oh, the leading coefficient you can make it. Make it. Okay. So. No, but the, the leading one, it's already so dominant. It's yeah. not like usual. Yeah. It's not expensive. We only have polynomial corrections. It's exponential corrections. So. Because the, the largest eigenvalue is slightly bigger in absolute value than the next one. Yeah. So, so what you're worrying about is exponentially small. Yeah, in comparison to that first eigenvalue, yes. But I just wanted to, I wanted to see. My hope in life was to get something that actually converges. But I don't, for a given n, if I want to compute alpha tau set, then this is not the method to go. Oh, exactly. Wait, okay. yeah. I want to be really exact. Okay. I'm asking for two. Oh, right. Like the random marker. Yeah. I'm going to have one. Okay. Go all the way. So. So what I can do here is to study this technique gives consecutive pattern avoidance. So to help me, let's define the notion function capital pi of n numbers, this n real numbers, to be the permutation pi 1 to pi n, such that for all indices i different from j, xi is less than xj should be equivalent to pi i less than pi j. And, I'm only, and I don't care if two of these variables are equal, this, are equal, I don't care about that case. So it really is this function that, given a point, I just have to read off in which simplex it lives in. And each simplex corresponds to permutation. So that's the function. So for S, subset, the symmetric group of n plus 1. And now pick permutation <coughs> pi in the symmetric group on n elements. You say that pi avoids S if rho is i pi, and now I read the window of this permutation, pi of i, pi of plus 1, of length n plus 1. Sorry, I may, maybe I'm missing something out of this. Is pi of x1 through xn supposed to be a real number? Yeah, so I put in the, 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 the list. I put in a list of n real numbers here. Yes, and the values are permutations. No, no, these are x1 is the real number. by 2 by n. Well, the, the product of the yeah, so it's in it, sorry, okay. Yeah, I mean, if I have 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.81, then this should just be permutation 2 by 3. Because I just compared it. This is bigger than that, so that should be bigger than that one. And so on. So pi with S 
if each window of length n plus 1 is not in the set x. So the case we did here was, what I started here was 1, 2, 3, awarding the mutations. But this more general setup, we can actually study as avoiding permutations. So, so I put up my given function chi. On n plus one variables, as before, <coughs> this can be a zero one function, and it's zero if capital pi of these n plus one numbers lies in the set S. I, this is the thing I don't want to occur. The set to, to be zero to get it off. And it's one of the bytes. Then my operator works now on the m dimensional unit cube to itself. And t of f of x1 to xm is I introduce one new variable, t. And the chi of t x1 to xm times the function, but just before everything is shifted in, so I have t x1 all the x x minus 1 dt. And the same reasoning as before. The number of S avoiding permutations are satisfies that alpha n of n factorial is given by the inner product t to the m minus m. Before my first case, we did m was equal to 2. Applied to constant function 1, inner product to constant function 1. And it's the same reasoning as before. It's really is that this function glides through the thing and checks if each n plus 1 tuple to make sure that a forbidden pattern does not occur. And if it does occur, it sets it to 0. And now we have to do spectral analysis here. So the spectrum W to T, and the only thing we have to do, the same thing as before, the only thing we have to change is this to be N minus M here. And N minus M. So it says that this problem studying S, consecutive pattern avoidance, should be done by looking at a corresponding operator and its spectrum. That's so far the good part of the story. The bad part of the story is that it gets complicated. Mm -hmm. So just to here from one to three avoiding, the spectrum was nice, I had a nice explicit expression of the values. Let's just tweak the problem a little bit. And do two one three avoiding. Well, just remember the class 
classical error function is 2 to the square root pi integral 0 to the x e to the minus t squared dt. So the eigenvalues satisfy the equation the error function of 1 over square 2 times the eigenvalue lambda this should be equal to square root of 2 over pi. That is an awful equation. And if you look at it, the largest eigenvalue, I think that it can be positive and real. And then the other eigenvalues come in here public scotty gets pairs and get close to the idea. But there's no way you can explicitly write this thing down. So true that this eigenvalue, the largest eigenvalue here, it shows that the number of limitations in this case does have constant times lambda zero to the n plus one but it's not there's not a really nice way to write down what this eigenvalue is well, we have an equation so you can get a numerical yeah I can get a numerical equation it's, it's only a convention call it a constant the error ball constant like pi is also ugly no no we shouldn't he is also ugly yeah. That's a new constant, capital E, and no constant. Okay, I, I, had, I had to confess something, okay? Then, should it be called the, the LSR the Noe constant then? <laughs> okay. I, I'm not the first one to study it, okay? I did that. Okay, I, okay, some name. Okay, so, okay. to blame on someone else, okay? Okay, <laughs> okay. so what can we do? So, do you have a bounds on the, the magnitude of the smaller eigenvalues? That you get explicitly? Well, I did bounce on the next pair coming here. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not. Yeah, because I would have to agree with Darone. I mean, you've got something that most analysts would be very happy to have that. Okay, Actually, you don't have anything <laughs> close to that. Okay, well. You know the story about Stanislav Wolan? Which? <laughs> Which story? <yeah. laughs> well, there's this thing that he was a topologist. And then he wound up at Los Alamos, and he said he'd been really applied in a petition because now it works with numbers that have decimal points. Again, <laughs> I'm still afraid of decimal points. Uh, so that's the name, a, a constant thing. Okay, well. Yeah. Quite something. So. And <laughs> well, what you Let me tell you what we can do. in this general setting. So I'm going to define a directed graph, H, which depends on this set S. The vertex set is I take the open interval from 0 to 1. I raise the nth power, so this is the open unit cube. But I want to remove all the points where I have two coordinates equal. So this is really this subdivision of thing of m dimensional unit cube into the open simplicity. Right? Then I have to give you the, the directed edges. And I'm going to have a directed edge from x1 over to xm, and a directed edge to x2 over to xm plus 1. So you see the shift again. If capital pi function of x1 for xm plus 1 does not belong to the forbidden set. 
So this is an infinite graph. But it's only a finite set of data that goes into it. And what we can prove then and wind up any other vertex. I need it to be a periodic. That is that if you look at all the cycles, you look at all the cycle lengths, the greatest common divisor of them should be one. There's been a periodic structure in the graph. Then, the associate operator T has the largest eigenvalue lambda, which is real, positive, and simple. And hence, the number of S avoiding permutation, alpha n domain factorial, is given by a constant times lambda to the n. Technically speaking, could be minus m here, but embed in the constant if you want, plus an error r to the n. R is less than lambda. So it gives a. a what you're really saying here is are, are all your eigenvalues real, by the way? No, no they're, not. they're not. So you're really saying there are no other eigenvalues with absolute value of lambda? Yeah. So, so you're saying, saying more than what you've said. Yeah. But if, if I have periodic behavior on it, then they're going to be, say, pure behavior to pure D. Then I'm going to have actually D largest eigenvalues. Lying with the regular D gone in the complex plane. But just taking that periodic case, period one, there's going to be one largest eigenvalue. But that's what you need for this theorem. For yeah. The yeah. And hey, so right. over time? Yeah. Uh, a half minute left. Okay, so this is proved. Do you remember for Bernius Peron from finite dimensional vector spaces? If you have a matrix that all positive entries, then you know that a matrix has the largest eigenvalue with real, positive, and simple. Well, that result you can state as saying it's not to say that the matrix to a high power has all positive entries. And now the corresponding result here is by Krein and Rotman that expresses the same result for now operators on an L2 space. Like here, L2 space on the n-dimensional unit cube, for example. And so what this result really says is that you can get around from any point to any point, and it says that the functions the operator t is positively proving and crime drop man applies, guaranteeing that you have this largest eigenvalue. So this comes out. I think I should stop there. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.